Hello and welcome to what is probably going to be the first full video on this channel. Um, for those of you who have no idea who I am, which is most of you, um, uh, there is a little introductory video on the channel, at least there should be at this point, um, just sort of introduces you to who I am and, and what this channel's about. But in brief, my name's Stuart, I am a commissioned painter, and I run Miniature Realms. Um, I, I do a bit of uh, podcasting and YouTubing, only a tiny bit of YouTubing actually, mainly podcasting, with a show called Out of the Frying Pan, which is a Middle Earth strategy battle game focused podcast with my friend Dan um, and we've uploaded a few videos on there but primarily it's an audio podcast now that's great really enjoy it Middle Earth is probably the main game I play um, but occasionally it's nice to do a video or talk about other game systems um, and I thought I'd finally get use this channel to sort of share some other things that I do um, and then maybe also do some painting tutorials um, and do some army showcases and things of some of the work I do. So it's going to be a mixture of work and play and just somewhere else I can put up things that, that aren't solely Middle Earth related. Um, there may be some Middle Earth related stuff that goes up on here as well and I may well share some things over from um, the other channel. Anyway, you can probably guess what this video is about from the title and from what you're viewing right now. Um, I very recently made the plunge to get back into some historical gaming. I really, really like the Black Powder rule set. It's nice and simple for me because I'm a simple person. Um, and I wanted something that was extremely beer and pretzels, if you like that phrase. Um, and then just easy to sort of get into the the historical worlds that I, I love um, and and have done many for many many years I just haven't done any gaming in those areas for many many years in fact I don't think I've done any black powder gaming since I was 16 17 and back then I was playing six mil um, Napoleonics and um, I think some 10 and 15 mil American Civil War. Can't remember what rules I was using for those. I know for the Napoleonics it was a, a, a free set of rules I got with uh, Heroics and Ross um, at 6 mil. So this is going back a long way. So the older review out there were may, maybe have heard of those those companies and things. But anyway, so just before Christmas, um, Black, um, World Games announced this new system. Um, it's its own scale, so it's kind of originally advertised as 15 mil. Um, I think to the eye they measure at 13.5 mil, which kind of places them fairly uniquely, really, within the, the kind of the wider market out there. The miniatures don't really work with 15 mil; they are much too small to be used with them, um, and they are much bigger than 10 mil models as well. Um, so some of the community, historical community, don't like that by the sounds of things. Looking at the the interwebs, so to speak, um, some things for something great and new. I'm not really going to get into that debate too much here. Um, like with many things I always say, if you don't like it, don't buy it. If you do like it, buy it. It's as simple as that really. There's enough choice out there across the market for to meet everyone's needs. Um, the interesting thing though about this sort of smaller scale um, is this the first time that you've got, that I believe that's been seen in, in plastic. Anyway, pre-orders went up before Christmas and through January. There were a number of different sort of starter bundles you could get. Um, I went for the, the big starter bundle, on which you get this starter set and some extras, and I'm gonna sort of show you all the things you get. Now, the, the full RRP, I believe, of this starter set on its own is 90 pounds um, if you're from the UK. Um, and if you went for the full starter bundle, it was about 100, I think it was 171 pounds. So it's quite a lot of money, but the amount of stuff you get is, is absolutely insane. I'm gonna flip the box over, um, kind of run you through what it says on the back. Uh, I appreciate a lot of people seeing this video are people that are purchasing the video, but already purchased this and stuff. So this, but because I have a bit of a connection with with um, some communities and things through my work that maybe don't know how much about black powder or all this, it, it may reach some some new people. But the basic set starter set, you get um, effectively two armies with twelve regiments in each. Um, and there's a hundred models in each. Now they are on strips of 10, so whether you want to say that they aren't individual models or not, that's, that's irrelevant, but lots and lots and lots of little soldiers in there. Um, and then there's 12 cannon and 12 generals in there per side. So 24 each of those things. You get a A5 black powder rule book. So black powder is a generic black powder era set of rules. I think originally written by Jervis Johnson and Rick Priestley, and Rick Priestley's kind of finalised it, and it's in its second edition now, published by Warlord Games. 
there's a background booklet in there to help you sort of get playing American Civil War within that era. So there's a few little rule changes and tweaks and things. Um, you get some flags, you get a, a, a barn, a Dutch style barn, an MDF made by Sarissa Precision. Um, you get some snake fences and you get your dice and stuff. So it's, it really, truly is a full starter set, everything you need to play. Um, and that's great. And then with your extra bundle, um, you actually get a, three more regiments per side, so a brigade box, some extra scenery, um, an extra rule book, which I'll discuss when I show you in a moment, um, and, and, and a couple of generals were available for those who ordered early enough, but I think most people got them by looks of things. So let's dig into the box. So I pop the lid off. So the first thing I mentioned was the black powder rule book in a5 format um, it looks like a quite a chunky set of rules in terms of, especially the hardback it kind of reminds me a little bit of the old warhammer um, 40k in fantasy days where you've got this really chunky set but the rules are actually really simple and straightforward um, and it's just um, there's a lot of lot of extra information around the way it's written when you actually break it down into its basic um, components and things is really really simple so I won't go into that too much detail here I may do a video about black powder but at the moment I'll just say you get your rule book in there this is your little booklet that you get separate um, I'll talk about this in a moment I'd like to sort of end this section of the video we're talking about so I will place it to one side um, and we'll look at the miniatures and things so you get the basis for the miniatures to go on which, which just seems pretty obvious um, so they've got holes ready for the miniatures so you can clip them in, which is pretty good. They're 60 mil by 20 mil for the infantry. Um, and you've got your artillery bases and bases for your officers if you should, you know, should you want to base them on little square ones. It's not super exciting, but makes sense. And then you've got all your sprues. So as I said, with the standard bundle, it's 12 of each. If you bought the extra size one, they give you an extra three of each effectively in the um, brigade boxes. Now, these come in grey and blue, so blue for your Union and grey for your Confederate. Um, they are exactly the same sprue um, other than the colour. Um, so what I'll do is if we can move this box slightly um, and see if we can get this to focus in at all. Probably not. There we go. Um, as you can see, very, very well detailed for what is a very, very small range of miniature. And this is what really turned my eye when this when this came out. Um, I like the idea of doing larger battles, um, but doing them in 28 millimeter scale is, is an awful lot of painting, especially when you play more than one system. Um, and making this smaller scale it's just fantastic. This makes it a lot more manageable. Don't get me wrong, there is still a lot of painting in this box. Um, if this isn't too, if this is a little bit out of focus, I'm able to just pop images up over what I'm filming here because it's quite hard to see in my little view on my, on my camera. Um, there's been a little bit of chatter about the sprues themselves in terms of the accuracy of them historically, and you're always going to get that with historical gaming, and, and, and quite rightly so. The question um, there's a mix of, of slouch caps and kepis and um, a wide brim caps and, and maybe too many beards and things um, and I think that's part of the um, the result of making one sprue fit for both both sides um, so the most historically accurate of us um, might not like that and the, the, there's some solutions I've seen online about trimming off the edges of some of the wider brim caps and things which is which is easy enough to do and um, they will take you a lot of time with this many miniatures I don't mind at this scale if I'm honest with you um, people who do mind at this scale probably won't be buying this box anyway so I, you know I, I wouldn't doesn't bother, doesn't bother me too much and uh, those who does bother as I say probably won't like this as a product anyway anyway that's your your lots and lots of sprues and then you got your Sarissa precision barn so Dutch style barn I believe um, and you get some snake fences I haven't actually opened it up yet to see how many snake fences you get in there. I do believe it's more than just the one set. I think it might be three or four. Then you always get some dice. Warlord have got these quite small dice. Always handy for wound markers and things. And then there are two flag sheets. Um, so we have a confederate one. And your union one. Now these are really nice. Um, 
they won't suit everyone because they won't be the regiments that people necessarily want to do. Um, there are some really good third party flag makers out there. I'm not sure how scale would suit that because um, these are scaled obviously for the 13.5mm the which is, is smaller than 15 it doesn't sound like a lot but uh, I've seen a couple of images online I think and I'm going to get this name wrong so apologies but there's a YouTuber called Hasburger Donkey who showed um, the flags that you got free with the War Games Illustrated magazine when they gave a free one of these sprues away versus his 15mm flags and they were significantly bigger and maybe too big to buy so if you were thought well I'll, I'll just order my flags from from a flag maker in 15 mil it may not be the right size so there is some question around that maybe one of those flag makers will come out and and rescale their flags in order to suit this we'll, we shall see as time goes on it depends how popular this is um, the only other thing I'll, I'll, I'll note on is there's a lot more confederate options than there are for union which in some ways maybe is a little odd as um, I think every union regiment would have had two flags um, and definitely later on in the war there's a lot more confederate regiments that maybe didn't carry two banners even though they're, they're, they're both options are here so it's, it's not a complaint really it's just uh, I'm surprised they've not jammed on there'll, there'll be a reason for it I'm sure maybe they couldn't get rights to things but there's definitely more options I think as I did a brief count there's about 70 odd of the the confederate ones obviously you can be used on different different because you might have a state flag and, a, and, a, and an army flag um, but yeah more options for the rebs um, I'm building both armies so I'm not really gaining either way there um, but the standard contents of the box is pretty good so I'm just gonna cut here now for a second before I get the new things over it saves uh, you hear me clashing around with sprues okay so these are the other things you get in the the larger bundle box i don't know how long that's going to be available for or even if that is still available now that the pre-order's gone and now that uh, everything's shipped if you excuse the, the the messy green mats i see a lot of youtube channels with these perfectly clean green mats um i am fairly tidy in my workspace but these mats this is my work area so they do get a battering i just throw them away and buy new ones when they get to the point where i can't see any green anymore anyway let's have a little look at what you get extra so these are the things that make it up to the 171 pounds bundle you get a copy of glory hallelujah now this is an existing supplement um, designed to be an, an addition to your standard black powder rules um, and it just adds extra flavor for american civil war era gaming um, i already had a digital edition of this I like my books on the shelf as well so it was a it was, I think the book retails at about 25 30 pounds so it makes the bundle um, very worth it to own it um, again when it was written it was primarily uh, aimed at um, like black powder can be played with any any scale I should say let's not let's not misrepresent it but you, you can see that it's written with with 28 mil in mind and I know the author also placed some 15 mil but there was no guidance really in there around any changes you make for smaller scales um, and gamers that that play black powder at smaller scales just tend to reduce the the ranges and things and that's generally all that's needed but anyway you get that book extra as I mentioned already you get an extra brigade in each uh, of each faction again they're exactly the same um, it's just the sprue color <clears throat> but these will I think they retail about 20 pounds um, you get your three regiments in so three sprues three cannon three officers um, taken a cellophane them off just to check but essentially what you get inside is what I've already showed you so bases you get a flag sheet which is great so that's, that really really helps if you've uh, only bought the starter bundle and wondering whether you've got enough flags to, 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 to do your whole army well just by buying an extra one of these um, you can um, you can have enough flags something else I was talking to one of my friends the other day and that, that you know, I'd like them to get interested in playing this they may or may not but uh, you could actually if you don't have much space and you don't want to go all in with a big box of black powder lots of those going around on eBay really really cheaply um, you pick yourself up a couple of these boxes 
so it's a brigade level. Um, you could play a very small game of Black Powder. Now, Black Powder is designed to be played bigger games, so the games will not last too long. Um, but you could spend, and I think you're looking at third-party retailers. These these twenty pound boxes suddenly become seventeen, and seventeen for three regiments. Um, not too bad at all. I would definitely say the best value is the starter boxes. But you know, if you wanted to start small, you're not sure. Definitely you can pick up these. But anyway, you get those included as well. And the last thing you get, or the, near in the end of the things you get extra in the starter bundle, is the extra Sarissa Precision Buildings. Um, these are available separately anyway on the Warlord website. I don't know if they'll become available on Sarissa's website. I know Sarissa have got lots of 15mm scenery. They don't have anything ACW specific at the moment, I don't think, unless I couldn't see it. But anyway, you get... Um, three more sort of farmhousey type buildings and then you get something that's Gettysburg specific really um, uh, so you get the the cemetery building and the uh, the cemetery arch um, so really really cool these will be quite chunky um, you see in the picture there really nice looking MDF buildings and Sarissa makes some some great quality stuff I think them and foreground um, lead the way um be nice if foreground in them in some ways because it have been pre-painted and i hate painting mdf but those are cool i look forward to building them um whether i'm playing gettysburg or not i'm not just sure yet but they'll still be useful um and then final few bits you get you get some little extra miniatures but warlord always seem to chuck in an extra sprue packet um, a little box every time so there's a free hail caesar book miniature there um, which is cool um, a 28 mil um, model that was that comes with the glory hallelujah booklet i didn't realize they were still giving them out but that's, that's come along in the pack as well so extra freebies always good and then the last two things you get are resin generals now these are as far as i'm aware pre-order exclusives um, there are versions of these um, coming out in wave three which i'll talk about in a moment um, but these these look pretty good so you've got um, robert e lee and george mead who were the commanding generals at gettysburg at gettysburg i should say so just have a little look now these are warlord resin and i know that some people aren't a huge fan i haven't had a lot of warlord resin stuff um it is a See if we can get this to focus. If this doesn't focus, I'll just pop images and I may well pop up image from the website up at the same time. Um, my camera's quite high above the desk. Um, so Robert E. Lee with his hat up. There is a metal version that you can buy in Wave 3, different pose. Um, so I pre-ordered that anyway. Um, I may well convert one of them to be a different general, so I won't need two Robert E. Lee's, but very, very cool. Um, and then you get a banner bearer, which is in two parts. So you've got your top part with your banner. It's quite bendy resin on his extremities. Um, but not too bad. One thing always, always concerns me with the, the softer resin as I said, I don't really have any Warlord resin. It's how well it cleans up. Sometimes you find that when you try to file it, it doesn't really go anywhere. And you get that kind of horrible plasticky stuff. But this looks like it will clean up, which is great. Because there's quite a lot of stuff coming in this resin rather than the hard plastic. And we're all, all aware that setting up the injection moulding and the cost of setup for the, for the sprues is quite high. But once you've done that... Um, they become the cheapest thing to produce but if you're making things in smaller numbers resin or metal is definitely the way to go in terms of making it cost effective but these do look like they'll clean up okay um, whether I feel the same about that one I'm cleaning up a whole box of cavalry we, we will see but I'm impressed by those um, regardless of their material um, I think they're pretty good and let's have a quick look at George Mead um, so Robert E. Lee is very iconic, um, even if you've had a passing knowledge of the American Civil War. Um, Meade, maybe not be so, so much. Um, the Union Army went through quite a few generals before they found one that, that uh, did a good enough job of, of leading, so to speak. There's a big historical debate there, but we won't get into that. Um, so, Banner Bear on that side as well. I don't know how well that's focusing or not. Um, as I said, if not, I'll just pop images up over over me rabbiting on anyway. Um, and then we've got 
Mead there. This hat on. So you, you've got the, the, the two commanders in chief for the Battle of Gettysburg. Now let's bring it back to this little booklet. And this is one of the things I was most interested in before we got to the point, um, before the, the stuff came out. Um, so black powder, it doesn't work on a miniature by miniature basis. So you don't have to have a set number of miniatures in a unit, so to speak. It works on unit frontages, so measurements of, of the front of the bases. And it has different frontage recommendations. Um, based on the size of the unit, be that a small or standard unit or a large unit or regular, etc., etc. Um, and then when we looked at the, um, the, the size of the basis, is a 60 mil wide basis, I'm gonna pop some images up of the models that I've painted already for this that I had free from on the front of, uh, of the War Games Illustrated magazine. Um, the full frontage was sort of over 300 millimeters, I think, for, for the unit. Um, which is quite a big frontage. It's it's about the same size as the maximum they recommend for a large unit in a 28 mil scale. So there's a little bit of a question over that, but I hope they would find some answers in this book. Um, and I'll flick through this fairly quickly, but um, nice little pamphlet that goes with the game. And if you don't have this, this in here has a few extra rules just to give you the flavor that turns this into something that's more American Civil War appropriate rather than generic black powder. So you've got very, very basic history. So if you pick this up in a, in a, in a shop and you, and you thought, oh, it looks an amazing box. It says you can play these big battles, but not really for me with American Civil War, um, especially you can imagine a, a kid picking this up but, and learning. This gives you a brief history of the American Civil War. I think it's brilliant. So hopefully it does attract some kids into that way. I know if a 10 or 11 or 12 year old me would have been amazingly excited to get this box. Um, and, and reading just a little bit about history there, I think is a really, really good thing. Um, pictures of the, the miniatures and things in, in the epic scale in the book, obviously in the Glory Hallelujah supplement. They're all um, 28 and, and a few pictures of 15 mils. Then it brings you on to a few things about the rules and it's brought in some of the rules from the Glory Hallelujah, but not all of it. So it just gives you some, some rules that add more flavor to the period, which is brilliant. And nice for a starter point as well. So if you've never, you've, maybe you've played Black Powder, but you've not played the period before, you could use the rules are in here before you go to the Glory Hallelujah booklet and get a lot more, um, add even more flavor and things in there. Um, so it's got your ranges there in inches. Um, now this was the first kind of bits that interested me. Uh, so, um, it's, gi it's given recommendations in the book that you can um, go two ways with it. You know, you don't have to, but that you could half your, your ranges and in inches or just convert them into centimeters. They both produce slightly different results. Centimeters means that you are playing at shorter ranges, but it also means that your your effective table size becomes bigger in terms of fitting a bigger back battle on there. The only thing that would affect that then would be the frontage that I, I just mentioned a little bit earlier on. Um, the first thing that did surprise me a little bit is in this section here. It has a number of stands, so the epic um, stands on those little bases to use rather than talking about bases of your own size just a recommendation in black powder so it talks about the number of stands that makes up the different sizes of units and it has one stand for tiny which makes perfect sense three for small five for regular and seven for large and, and that did surprise me when I read that last night for the first time so the, each of the sprues will give you a five stand regiment um, which would be a regular size based on this um, I think most of the community were assuming that that would be the largest possible size due to the frontage being at the largest size based on the normal black powder rules. We couldn't imagine it to be any larger considering these models are smaller than 28 mil. Um, so yeah, that has surprised me a little bit. Um, it is, it's, it's an historical war game. It's not a competitive war game. People are just doing their own thing. And I imagine a lot of people may well ignore that. A lot of the people online that I've seen that making videos and things and, and posting up in groups already have decided they're using three stand four stand regiments max sort of size um, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet um, but it's, it's definitely interesting I just want to be able to squeeze as many regiments on the table as possible and have a, a decent game and not limit it by a normal size um, at home I'll be playing on a 6x4 um, and I'd like to, be able to have some decent sized games and not think well I have to stop at a division here because I can't fit anything else on but we shall see but anyway 
that's a, that's another debate but um it's definitely surprised me a little bit based on what what, what people have assumed um it has some basic stats regiments um i know in glory hallelujah it's got some stats for some famous regiments and things and then you've got some scenarios um and these look like the ones taken from the glory hallelujah book but um definitely simplified in terms of the wording and the presentation of the orders of battle stripped right down tells you how many infantry and artillery to have and when it says a six infantry it means six standard infantry regiments and that'll be the ones of five because i think it mentions whether it's tiny or large etc um, but i have compared those with the order of battles for glory hallelujah it looks like it's the same as was suggested for the tw you know it in 28 mil scale um, so the difference really is what represents a large, what represents a, a regular, and what represents small and tiny, etc. I think that that table there was the, the biggest surprise for me, is seeing seven stands for a large and just thinking that's like 420 millimetres, which is, let's say, larger than a 28 mil scale, which seems a bit bizarre. But anyway, that's my only kind of question on it, really. I know some people are unhappy with, with certain parts of the sculpts in terms of their historical authenticity. Doesn't worry me at all in this scale my question my only kind of if I'm reviewing the product my only feedback and this is having not played it yet but only feedback would be those unit frontages seem too large and too many stands anyway what I'm going to do now is talk a little bit about what's coming up in wave two or three So what I wanted to do now is just sort of talk about some of the things that are coming up in waves two and three of which pre-orders have gone up of both. Um, now I've pre-ordered for both waves as well and uh, I did before I received my box. This is quite an unusual situation. I think some of this is caused by delays in COVID. I think ideally this box, I think they wanted to get it out in February originally. Um, but I've pre-ordered wave two and um, just yesterday I pre-ordered wave three just before my, my, my actual first box arrived. But having already had the sprues, um, from from the from the magazine, I managed to pick up four of the sprues. Um, and I've painted up two Confederate already, and I'm halfway through painting two Union. I already knew what the miniatures were like, and I knew what Black Powder was like, so I already wrote, owned a set of rules. Um, I already knew what Glory Hallelujah was like, so it was really kind of what was in the the extra booklet. And you know, we can we can do what we want as gamers. We don't have to follow those number of stands. I'm still not sure what I will do as yet. The only thing I'll, I'll say extra to that would be um, it's nice when the standard set of rules um, works well and everyone agrees on it. Um, because w when you don't um, and you meet someone who doesn't play the game before you need a lot more conversation before you, before you play the game about what consists of a large unit or not etc anyway so if we look on the Warlord Games website I'm just going to pop some images up of this now rather than record me clicking around on the internet um, there are a number of, of wave 2 and wave 3 things including some bundled trees and things as you can see on that first screenshot there um, there are some bundles for wave um, two that give you cavalry and um, zouaves um, and iron brigade and it's split into two so there's a union bundle which has a box of the cavalry has a box of iron brigade and it has a box of zouaves and then the confederate bundle which has two lots of cavalry and a box of zouaves so for those of you who don't know the history iron brigade is a union pacific specific unit um, and then both of those bundle deals gives you some free um, wound markers which is great um, so I'm just going to show you some pictures of those individual boxes. So apart from the iron brigade as already mentioned which I'll show you first um, the The um, the other miniatures and things are all generic and can be used on both sides. So this Iron Brigade first. And then if we look at the Cavalry, so this also say can be used for both sides. And I'll just pop some images up of those. Now these are all Warlord resins, so the same resin as the Generals that I showed you earlier not everyone is happy about that um, I can understand it from what little I know of the business that plaster production of these things would have been a risky and a, and a big kind of financial outlay of, of things that, that may not sell as much um, but 
it is what it is. Um, there's been a little bit of chatter about the price as well compared to the, the plastic brigade box sets at £20 and you get the plastic, so you get the Warlord Resin Iron Brigade and it's double the price of £40. Um, I don't know what pricing structure they use. I was happy to pay that for the amount of models you've got. Um, not everyone is. Um, there is a manufacturer out there called Calistra who does 12 millimeter scale miniatures. I think I've, I can't think of another manufacturer that does them, but I'm not so up on historical um, market as some people are. Um, but um, they do some a metal range 12 millimeter American Civil War that a lot of people are using as an alternative, and they're pretty good. I picked up a command set because um, I thought I was going to make some smaller regiments and use those for that. The sculpts aren't as good. I do prefer the Warlord sculpts. I think they've been done digitally. And it really, really changes the, the accuracy and the, and the proportional, how much the, how the infantrymen are proportioned. But um, yeah, they're, they're pretty good and I'm quite happy with the, the bundles. Now, I actually ordered the um, Union bundle um, just once. So 120 pounds is not cheap um, and I'm going to split that between both the forces I'm doing I didn't order the Confederate because you don't get the Iron Brigade then <coughs> excuse me so I thought I'd split between the two and if I need to buy more cavalry later I will I didn't think I'll be needing um, more Zouaves or Iron Brigade um, a whole brigade of Iron Brigade Iron Brigade should be enough and the Zouaves I'm going to split between the, the two the two armies um, and, and I think that was pretty much it for wave two. And I may have missed something. I think there's some paint sets and things as well, but they are just repackaged army painter and um, Vallejo paint sets. Um, let me show you a, a closer picture of the casualty markers, which I believe are part of wave three, but I've not ordered any of these individually. I've just ordered the them free as part of the bundle. So there's an image of those there. I think they're resin and you paint on the numbers yourself would be interesting to have dials. I may file down the um, the number and just use a very small dice and flick that over as needed as casualties get higher. And then brings us on to wave three. Um, and this will probably caused the most consternation on the internet in terms of pricing. Um, we have the first metal miniatures in the range. So we have the Confederate Command. Um, where you get a Robert Ely in a different pose and uh, I may well just add a slightly longer beard and he will become my uh, my James Longstreet and you got Thomas Stonewall Jackson. Now Jackson was was no longer with us by the time of Gettysburg so it doesn't quite fit the theme but he's such an iconic character that it makes sense but based on the Gettysburg terrain and the very kind of Gettysburg um, theme of the the miniature especially with Meade as one of the commanders um, Longstreet would have probably made a more logical sense in that pack but I'm guessing more people have heard of Stonewall Jackson than heard of General Longstreet and then the metal black and metal um, Union set you have George Meade in a different pose I quite like that pose actually um, but again one of my George Meads will probably be converted to someone else as well and they got Ulysses S Grant which is obviously the um, was was doing very very well at that time but in, in the western theatre rather than the eastern theatre where Gettysburg was um, and he took over command of the army um, not too long after Gettysburg and he may well be one of the most um, recognisable names for for the Union command the issue there again was he wasn't at Gettysburg so you've got two generals there that I suppose the argument will be will enable you to play in different theatres um, but again Ulysses S. Grant was a long way away from the other side and came up against Lee later on and Jackson was from an early period so it's a bit mixed match um, I mean, that's not a complaint um, I get why they've picked those they're probably far more iconic hopefully they'll do another pack of each when they just add in a couple more and or a generic pack because this is a small scale Anyway, on to the other things that they did. So we have some dismounted cavalry. Now, there's been, a, again, a lot of talk about price on these. I think they look great, first off. Um, but £40 for the amount of miniatures in there is starting to kind of stretch a little bit versus the, um, say, Zouaves and the... Um, 
and the Iron Brigade and it definitely stretches compared to the plastic. Um, I don't want to compare it to the plastic too much because they are different materials and different costs relate to them. I have pre-ordered these, I think they're good. The way cavalry fought in the American Civil War is different to other periods, there weren't really many cavalry charges and things, so they were be working, you know, performing a bit more like dragoons in, in, in Napoleonic period or something. Um, but again, there are alternatives to these if you go to sort of Calistra, for example. I know a lot of people will be doing that because of the cost involved. Um, I really like these quality of these sculpts so I'm willing to pay a bit more but at least there is a option and then the skirmishers and again similar problem there's not a lot of resin there and those are 40 pounds um, so it's um, something that's a little bit more pricey than it maybe should be I don't know I know a lot of people are quite angry about the price of skirmishes and will be buying from other manufacturers as I said I have pre-ordered these as well they do look nice I do like them um, but yeah they do you know in proportion cost um, doesn't seem to make sense they're 25 I suppose so they are less than the um, less than a dismounted cavalry so then they've got that going for them but i quite like them and then you've got something i didn't know they were going to do and i don't know this if, if this was a response to people online being quite vocal about the size of the regiments and saying they were going to use um alternatives like calistra to make their own command stands and, and and make more use of the plastics that come in the box um i definitely ordered a pack of each um from calistra so um, I don't know whether I use those now or I'll use these, but these are the command strips. So these command strips are basically Warlord resin versions of the ones that the uh, the plastic ones that are on the sprue, and they enable you to um, add them into your existing plastics and make some some make basically make more units out of your 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 frames. Um, means you can have a turn your sprue of uh, a couple of sprues into five, into one of five, and one of three, and one of two, or something like that. So, pretty good. Um, comparison wise in terms of price they compare quite favorably with um Calistra's, um 12 millimeter models figure to figure um but you only get command figures in the Calistra command pack so some people still use it i think because i like the scale and the um the quality of the the design of these i'm more likely going to use these i've just ordered one set at the moment um whether i need more or not in the future i imagine i will um, i've got a lot to paint so i'll add them as and when i need them and that brings me on to the next thing which is the 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 limber um now i think this is a really really nice looking model um there are some questions from the community over the over the price um uh, it's it's one of those isn't it it i i haven't pre-ordered this um because of the price now i'm not saying i won't buy from all or games for this but at 12 pounds for a limber um i don't know how many i'd need in a game yet you could play the game without using limbers and just turning your, your miniature around um how many guns have i got already 24 numbers 20 30 30 guns already at least so if I wanted one for each limber, it's going to get really, really expensive. Um, and again, I'll, I'll do the comparison to Calistra because it seems to be the one the community is talking about and potentially the only one at least we can get in the UK. I'm not sure there's alternatives elsewhere that, that, that goes close to matching the scale with their 12 mil limbers. I think for six pound you get two. Um, so this would be four times more expensive. Um, this is also metal as well, the same as Calistra. I think this is better. It looks like a better quality sculpt. Um, but at the moment I'm not planning on getting any limbers and, and, and if I do I will see I will see how many I think I need to occasionally use them in the game I definitely don't need one for every battery in the game um, but I would um, you're looking at two and four stand batteries and you're thinking if you're moving a battery um, you, you may well need um, enough to do maybe a couple of batteries on each side if you're collecting both sides like I am which 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 could app add up a lot for something is not used in game very often it's optional you don't have to have this definitely not angry about the pricing some people are quite disappointed um, but it, it is what it is um, and then one of the final things from the wave 3 bundle was a wagon 
and, I, and again it's one of those things now this is essentially just back in baggage um so it's a nice to have it's 12 pounds for for the 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 um resin and metal kit i think this is a bit of a mix what it says on the on the wall wall or website um i don't think let do these um they're not necessarily needed it might be nice to grab a couple for flavor at some point they're definitely not needed for the game um, and maybe they're priced based on maybe the production cost of these is based into how often they will need to replace them based on how many people are buying them i don't know but i definitely um i've not ordered that so they're the only only two things out of the whole range so far that i haven't ordered at least one of they do do deals um for the wave three um i'll put a pop an image up of that now um, and it, much like the Wave 2 bundles, there's a Confederate one and a Union one with a decent saving, and you're getting free commanders and, and casualty packs. Um, essentially, they're the same aside from which commanders you're getting. So I think I ordered the Confederate one and then added the separate metal Union um, on top. Now, whether that's enough for me in total or whether i need more in the future i don't know but at 130 pounds and I, there was i did have some some points to spend which took a bit of money off and they did give a voucher code which took a little bit more money off that's otherwise i'd probably have ordered from my from my friendly local um game store um i don't know how many more i'll need but i have some some skirmishes there which you can use to place out in front of your units if you go into a mixed formation and I'm, I'm sure just having a few on hand will be enough for most size games um and then the dismounted cavalry. Well, i've got enough versus the cavalry that i've actually bought so far i may need to add more cavalry we will see um but you do get more of the free wound markers so i may well have enough of those now with the two free sets i've got especially if i use the system i said with using dice instead of um, the actual number that's on them and i've got the extra commanders and if felt like a good deal um but um yeah there's the, the prices will probably question more on though that the way three bundle than they have been on anything else especially versus what you can get at, at Kalistra. but as far as i'm aware there's only one manufacturer there that's offering something that's alternative that will match is close enough to the scale maybe some people don't mind the scale being a bit out and using a 10 mil model or using a 15 but all the examples i've seen and the handful of 10 and 15 models mil models i've got they're, they're far too far difference in scale for me and it would would annoy me i'm i'm a i'm a painter i'm a hobbyist at heart i want things to look cool on the table and um that would jar too much and some people always say that you know they're more interested in the uniforms being correct we all have our own priorities and things so for me and um, the quality of the sculpt is a big one that's why i'm potentially more likely to spend more money on those command strips than i would do by buying more packs of calistra um i don't know whether i'll even use my calistra bits i may add a few of them to command stands and things like that because um, i think the one officer on a square base for a commander i think is a bit unimaginative so i think i will definitely for the divisional commanders and the, you know, the army commander and core commanders i may well do some round bases with mini vineyards or something like that which would be a bit of fun so i may use them in those overall though um let's sort of close the video down with with a, with a bit of a kind of overall thoughts on the release so far so some uh, final thoughts on the release and this is been a much longer video than i originally intended i wanted to make it a little bit more than just an unboxing um i wanted to discuss some of the some of the, the the second and third wave and, and some of the comments that i've seen in the the awesome groups that are springing up for this this um system and some of the other things i've seen online from from youtubers and stuff as well i just want to mention something really getting across my overall thoughts so far um i'm really excited about the release i think it's fantastic i'm personally a big fan of what warlord do i know they're not everyone's cup of tea you know some people see them a bit as the, the games workshop of historical gaming i'm also a fan of games workshop i think they do uh, an awful lot for the wider hobby getting newer players into the game um I wouldn't have played historical gaming if I hadn't picked up had Hero Quest as a, as a child. Um, there's quite a journey in between that and systems and big start sets like this are the kind of things that, that might want well to interest um, younger people walking into a, a hobby shop. There's a lot more hobby shops now, especially your, your independents are stocking um, historical games. And I know some people might think, well, you know, that, that, that there's a lot of corners cut and money making decisions made by Warlord. I, 
I, I see it differently, but that's a, that's a debate that, does, that doesn't need to be had really. I think if you like a product, you buy it. If you don't like it, there's, there's plenty of alternatives out there. Um, so I, I think it's a great product. Yes, there are things that the, the, the button counters, and I've been out in a nice way, not a nasty way. The button counters might not like some of the, the choices made on the, the sort of dual sprue. Um, some people don't even like black powder as a set of rules. Um, it's, for me, it's perfect. It's, it's exactly what I need. I like working in plastic models primarily, and I've got no problem working with resin models. I had some concerns over the resin, whether it's good quality. I use a lot of forge world resin um, and it's great stuff. So I'm used to sort of really high end resin and some of the cheaper resins can be quite hard to work with. But that little tester I did, um, I lay some of my fears a little bit that the wall or resin might be terrible. We don't know what that's like when we when I get the later boxes, but we shall see. Um, but overall, I think it's fantastic. I like the, like the black powder rule set. I think the starter box is great value. It was, as I said, the retail was 90 pounds on pre-order just when we were when I was flicking through the pictures discussing the, the later waves I saw that it was um, it's a hundred pounds now is the full cost for the standard starter which is, is not small not a small amount of money but the amount of stuff you get in there you necessarily don't need anymore especially if you're buying extra command strips um, and turning those 12 regiments maybe into 15 aside um, that's a lot that's, that's more than most people will play you know we're talking fair few brigades there divisional level and um, with the the extra bundles adding some zwaves and stuff we're talking about getting up to a, a, a core easily aside which is, is massive um, if you've got a table big enough to play it I'm definitely planning on armies the size that are probably too big for the gaming space I have and that brings me to, that's probably, I've already mentioned it, my only slight eyebrow raise was, was on the number of stands it was recommended um, for each regiment size, each unit size. Part, firstly, because it seems to be bigger than the, bigger frontage than a 28 millimeter counterpart. Um, and secondly, because I think the opportunity for this, from the way I see it, is to get really big style, black powder style games on a smaller table so that you don't need your big 12 by 8 tables um, in order to play these large black powder style games which is what the rule set works best at large size um, so in that sense I think it's a shame but we don't have to use the rules as they are in the box historical games if you're watching this and you've known me from 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 games workshop games and things historical games gamers tend to do their own thing an awful lot more and it's very much of the ethos of, of historical gaming and it mentions it in the black powder rules itself so we don't need to use seven stands for a large um i think the consensus on a couple of groups where i've got some there's some chatting going on at the moment for this is that that the people are going to use one for small um sorry one for tiny two for small three for for, for your standard um and four for your large which seems quite cool as well and if you do that system your frontage is smaller you can get more regiments on the table therefore more brigades and so on and so on i don't know that does sound pretty cool and that way my, may may become a kind of consensus across people but you don't need a consensus for this game you just need a consensus with your opponent and the basing is all the same anyway naturally if you're using this standard basing um so you, when you get to the point where you're working at what army's facing off against the other all you do is match your sizes and it doesn't really matter other than that so it's not a complaint um it's just something that may that would surprise me a little bit because i thought the object would be to um to get more on the more regiments on the table rather than just more minis etc etc um and on the pricing you've got a choice you, you you pay it or you don't i don't think um i don't worry too much about those there is nice that there's an alternative ready-made alternative almost in Callistra because the scale's close enough. Some people are more frustrated than others. Some people I know that are disappointed having bought into the main set. Um, they now feel like they've been let down with the other ways. I don't feel that myself. Um, I, those, the prices are what they are. Um, some stuff I'll get, some stuff I won't. Um, the game is good enough in itself anyway and, and as gamers we're, we're quite resourceful and, and, and can uh, make things as and when needed. But I definitely recommend it for anyone that's interested in historical gaming definitely sort of the black powder era if you've never tried it before uh, American Civil War is probably a little bit easier to get your head around than Napoleonic in some some instances but I do hope they make a Napoleonic version of that this as well because I would be all over that would be fantastic anyway thanks for watching the video which turned out to be a really really long one and um, hopefully I'll catch you more with some 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 more videos on it and i will put some painting videos up as they go you've seen some images there of the the two uh, rebel units that i've done already but anyway catch you soon